All right, hello to you. I am Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade, and it is that time of the afternoon, time for an update on what's happening in the tropics. We always hope that things stay quiet, but we have a brand new hurricane out in the Atlantic, so I'm going to update you on that, let you know some of the impacts potentially and where it is headed, and also a look at anything that could be headed our way. So let's get right to it. Of course, we are now less than a week away from hurricane season, at least the the peak of it, which is usually September 10th, and we are going to be dealing with likely more of these tropical cyclones developing out there as we get closer to the peak of our hurricane season, which as I mentioned is less than a week away. We now have Hurricane Lee out in the central Atlantic. It was just named a hurricane over the last few minutes. As of that latest advisory, it was a tropical storm prior to that and a tropical depression before that. Now we've got a strong tropical wave as well in the far east Atlantic, still with a decent shot to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm over the next week. First though, let's get to Lee, which is now a hurricane. We had high confidence that with this 4 p.m. advisory, this would likely turn into a hurricane. It's been getting better and better organized over the last several hours. No well-defined eye just yet, but that likely will come pretty soon as it is rapidly intensifying. At this point, Hurricane Lee with maximum sustained winds around 75 miles per hour movement to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and pressure currently down to 991 millibars. So that pressure will likely continue to fall and that will correspond with the wind going up and this hurricane getting stronger. It's moving over some very warm waters in the Atlantic, so that will help it to intensify. Not a ton of shear out there to kind of rip it apart in the mid to upper levels. So it's in an environment where it would likely continue to get stronger pretty quickly. In fact, you can see that in the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center Thursday afternoon, a category two hurricane expected with 100 mile per hour winds by Friday around 1 p.m. It will likely be a major hurricane already at a category three with 125 mile per hour winds. Then as we go into Saturday afternoon, getting close to category five status, a very powerful, dangerous, strong category four with 150 mile per hour winds. And it will likely maintain that strength through Sunday afternoon with 150 mile per hour winds. Then by Monday, back down to 145 mile per hour winds as it is pushing off to the northwest of Puerto Rico. But you can see the general movement likely to the west northwest right now at 14 miles per hour. And that will continue through the weekend after that, most of the models try to curve it a little bit to the north and keep it away from the east coast of the U.S., but it's still not certain. So we will have to monitor this closely because if that track changes a little bit, this could get very close, dangerously close to portions of the east coast of the U.S., and that would be major since this is expected to be a very powerful, dangerous hurricane over the next couple of days. But at least at this point, it looks like it will stay out of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. It should pass just to the north and east of the Lesser Antilles Saturday afternoon and Saturday night, and then it will be pushing north of Puerto Rico as we go into Sunday and Monday as a very powerful, dangerous category four hurricane likely. So you can see San Juan, Puerto Rico there, northern portions of the Lesser Antilles, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos Islands will potentially get some impacts from this as we go into early next week, likely around Monday as the system gets closer. But you can see the east coast of Florida over here, so they will be monitoring things closely in case this hurricane does not make that turn to the north and things could get pretty interesting for folks along the east coast. So hopefully it will curve north and miss the east coast of the US, but we will be tracking it closely. Here are the latest spaghetti computer model plots for Hurricane Lee basically showing that west northwesterly track at least through the next four or five days or so. And then after that, the longer range models kind of curving it more off to the north before it would reach the east coast of the US. But of course that track could change and we will be monitoring things closely and keeping you updated. So fortunately we are fairly quiet across the Gulf of Mexico, quiet for now for the Caribbean and fairly quiet in the southwestern Atlantic. But in the central Atlantic, of course, we now have category one Hurricane Lee that will be getting closer to the Lesser Antilles over the next few days. 
I want to expand the view and show what's going on in the eastern half of the Atlantic because we have not one but two more systems that we are monitoring. One of them I'm not as concerned about and that would be the one way up here in the far northeast Atlantic. This is post tropical Franklin or what's left of what was Franklin. Now with a slightly higher 30% chance for development over the next two days and a 30% shot for development over the next seven days. But it is way out there. This would not be impacting or getting anywhere close to the US and the chances of it developing are still on the low side so the chance of it the chances for it turning back into a tropical depression or tropical storm or a hurricane on the low side but we will of course monitor it but it only has a kind of small window for that to happen over the next few days as we move farther south we have a strong tropical wave a much stronger tropical wave that is still in the far east atlantic it did roll off of the west coast of Africa and it now has a 30% chance to develop over the next 48 hours and still a medium 60% chance to turn into a tropical depression or tropical storm over the next seven days. So this one will have to make it all the way across the Atlantic. So we still have several days to watch it, but that general movement is to the northwest. So things could get interesting with this one as well, but we will be monitoring it as we go through the next several days. Here's a closer look at the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea. We've got a few areas of convection of showers and storms out there, but nothing being monitored for possible tropical cyclone development at this time. Of course, over our area in Southeast Texas, we've still got that big heat dome just to our west, so that will continue to influence our weather. But if we did have something to make it into the Gulf, we still have very warm water out there that would help to fuel any systems developing and they would likely strengthen quickly. We've got water temps right around 90 degrees just to the south and east of New Orleans. Water temps in the upper 80s for just about every other part of the Gulf of Mexico. So definitely we have the warm water to help to intensify any system that could develop it or make it in. But at this point, I'm not expecting anything pushing across the Gulf at least over the next week or so. Our 2023 tropical cyclone names are as follows. We've got Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harold, Adalia, Jose, and Katia, and Lee. We've already gone through all of those so far for this hurricane season. And of course, we have two additional areas that we're monitoring in the eastern Atlantic. So we could have Margot and Nigel over the next few days. So we certainly have had a busy season so far, even though nothing has come to southeast Texas, but in other areas, definitely still a busy season. And we've still got a ways to go and another whole list of names on the right here that we could potentially get through from Ophelia all the way down to Whitney. Hopefully that won't happen. We want to keep things fairly quiet for the remainder of hurricane season, but we are very close to the peak and our official forecast from NOAA and from Colorado State University still have us with that above average season, still expecting a total number of 18 named storms, or at least the forecast calling for it. 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes from the Colorado State University forecast. The last update for that was early August and of course the NOAA forecast calling for an above normal season or remainder of the season as well. So here is our tropical climatology and you can see that we are super close to the peak of hurricane season which is right around September 10th and even after that the rest of September typically pretty active. Even the first half of October usually pretty busy for us. Then we start to wind things down as we get towards the end of October and November, but there still could be a few tropical systems popping up even then. So the good news for us here in Houston, here in Southeast Texas, the fact that we are not anticipating anything heading our way over the next week. But of course, with that super warm water out there in the Gulf of Mexico and with us being so close to the peak of hurricane season, you certainly want to make sure you're prepared. Don't let your guard down. Make sure you've got the insurance you need. Make sure you have your emergency hurricane kit ready to go just in case we do get something heading our way. And just make sure that you are just ready, your family is ready, you have a plan in place, a plan of action in case we do get a tropical system headed towards us. You don't want to wait to the last minute because there's so many other things that you need to try to do to get prepared. You just want to make sure that you are ready to go. All right, if you don't already have it, make sure to grab our Fox 26 weather app. You can get that from the App Store, search for Fox 26. You can find all of your tropical weather, 
and plenty of other features on there. And of course, if we do get any alerts for any tropical systems here or elsewhere, you can find those as well. Well, that will do it for your tropical weather update for this afternoon. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist for Misha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.